now I want to turn to how Iran has in recent weeks welcomed the university activists on campus globally. Well, the Australian's columnist Chris Mitchell writes today that it's the media who continue to swallow Hamas's lies. He says, and I'm quoting here, much of the media, many university leaders, student protesters and some of our politicians need to be held accountable for allowing themselves to be used in an Iranian-sponsored propaganda war designed to entrench Islamic fundamentalism. Alex, what do you think about the ignorance of this group, from students to politicians to journalists? Well, I agree with those sentiments entirely. I mean, the media, particularly in this country, or sections of it, have a great deal to answer for. From the very beginning of this war, they have quoted uncritically Hamas propaganda as their statistics for casualties in Gaza. They have laundered what is effectively a band of rapists and murderers and thugs into resistors. They call people who relentlessly dox and harass and intimidate Jewish Australians as peace activists. You have a situation where it's becoming more and more normal to describe Israel, which is the only democracy in the Middle East, as an apartheid state, to describe their just war against a terrorist organization as a genocide. And there has to be reckoning. We are seeing a situation where disinformation is being spread at levels that we've not seen before. And it's leading to a fracturing of our social cohesion, threats mm -hmm. and intimidation of our community. And this really has to stop. I mean, we, we talk, and you just referred to it there, you know, this, this moral confusion or how everything seems to be turned upside down at the moment when it comes to the moral compass, particularly among the left. Well, a Nobel Prize winner, Herta Mala, has written about this brilliantly. And she says that she's appalled that young people, students in the West, are so confused that they are no longer aware of their freedom, that they have apparently lost the ability to distinguish between democracy and dictatorship. I mean, don't you think we are seeing that across the board now? And, and just last week, when Israel bravely rescued the four hostages, you know, people couldn't come out, like Penny Wong, couldn't come out and openly celebrate that for the good news that it is. I think in, in some ways I would actually disagree with, with the, the quote that you read. I think the sentiment of it is entirely correct, but I think that people actually can tell the difference quite clearly between right and wrong, between a terrorist organisation and a free state. What really disturbs me, what really concerns me for our society and for the future of this country is the fact that it is so glaringly obvious what each side in the conflict stands for, what they represent. And yet, a great number of people, particularly young people, are choosing the side of evil. They are looking at the same images, Shari, that you and I saw. They saw Noah Agamani, one of the rescued hostages, being dragged away from a dance party on the back of a motorcycle to a depraved captivity by a terrorist organisation. And there are people among us who look mm. at that same image and feel greater sympathy for the terrorist men than for the young woman being abducted in the most horrific circumstances imaginable. And mm. it's that inability to actually sympathise with Israel merely because it is a Jewish homeland and represents Western values and democracy and freedom and liberalism, and the preference for a terrorist organization, siding with the Ayatollahs and increasingly with neo-Nazis that have flooded to the pro-Palestinian cause. Yeah. This is what really troubles me about the future of our society. Oh, I completely agree. Alex Rifchin, thank you very much for your time.